four, three, two. Thanks again for clicking on to WKYC.com and of course our Facebook page. Lots going on if you're joining me along the North Coast. Oh my goodness, it has been a really wet and really kind of windy afternoon. So let's bring you right on into our newest severe thunderstorm warning. This is going to be for eastern Cuyahoga County Lake and parts of Geauga County till about 240 in the afternoon. The other thing I want to make sure that we mention is the fact that and we were talking about this before torrential rain is being seen out of these thunderstorms that are popping up and developing and because of that that's leading to flooding concerns. You can see where that aerial flood warning has been issued that does include downtown Cleveland meaning that the streets will be flooded at times. You want to make sure that you never try to pass or try to drive through a flooded roadway. But from Cleveland back towards, say, parts of Lakewood, Rocky River area, Bay Village toward Westlake. Again, we're all seeing some standing water, so watch out for that. It doesn't take a whole lot of water, by the way, to float a vehicle. That severe thunderstorm warning just means that we could see winds in excess of 58 to 60 miles per hour. Hail, not so much of a concern, which is the good news, but again, this just kind of means that we need to make sure that we're staying inside until these storms have passed. This severe thunderstorm that we were tracking for you earlier, good news is it is beginning to to diminish some in intensity. But again, the rainfall with it is certainly going to be a little more prolific from Mayfield Heights over towards Shaker down into Solon. All of this, by the way, developing along what we call an outflow boundary. And you can see that little boundary right about here. And that's where things are really beginning to fire up along. And again, that'll be the trend through the afternoon. Not a great time, though, if you're thinking about heading out on the water toward Menor, Menor on the lake area. Let's stay on shore until these storms have passed. That's region number one of concern. And although there's not a severe thunderstorm warning with this region here, I do want to let you know that from what I'm seeing in parts of Erie into Huron County, it's another developing thunderstorm, much like what we saw over the past hour to two hours ago when that was warned earlier in the uh, early afternoon, but from Sandusky over towards Cedar Point, racing toward the east at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. That line of storms should move into Vermilion at about 207. So in the next five minutes over toward Lorraine, at about 237, Sheffield Lake at about 250, and then Elyria right before the top of the hour. And again, what you can expect is torrential rainfall with this. There's quite a bit of lightning in there as well. Perhaps some small pea sized hail. Again, hail not really going to be the hallmark of this. I think what we'll see is perhaps damaging winds capable of bringing down a couple of trees, a couple of power lines as well. So out ahead of that line of storms, if you're joining me from, say, New London, over toward parts of western Medina County through Lorraine County. A good time to perhaps bring your car inside into the garage or underneath that carport. It was a beautiful morning. I know that a lot of folks rolled down their windows and may have left those windows down. You want to run out to your vehicles, roll up the windows, and if you can, bring them into a garage or perhaps even underneath that carport, as we mentioned before. Let me kind of toggle back on over to where, where we have that severe thunderstorm warning in parts of Cuyahoga Lake and Geauga County. Again, good news is you can notice just by looking at the red, there was a lot of deep red earlier within the past half an hour, just meaning that torrential rain, gusty winds was really a problem. Now, though, from what I'm seeing, it looks like the intensity is lagging some. So again, I expect there to still be some really heavy rain right along 322. Boy, that is not a roadway you want to be along right now. I would absolutely bet that a lot of folks are perhaps parked underneath those overpasses just to kind of dodge the rain. It is probably coming down in buckets along 322 right now. So friends or family that are going to be perhaps taking that commute. Again, I'd perhaps kind of stay inside, stay in the middle field area until those storms have passed. So looks like that's weakening, which is the good news. I want to toggle back and just show you how much rainfall, by the way, we've picked up and the reason why one of the hallmarks from today's storms, I think, is going to be the fact that excessive rain is going to be an issue. So what we can do is put on our radar estimated rain. That's what this is over the past 12 hours. And you can see in parts of downtown Cleveland, just west of town, downtown toward Lake Lakewood area on the order of, say, an inch and a half perhaps upwards of two inches of rain in spots. And I'll zoom in just a little bit closer for you here as well. 
again, just so you can get a better idea on where we're talking about. This is right along Madison Avenue. Of course, a lot of shop, shops in that area. Rocky River not too far away from that. It looks like Rocky River perhaps a little less in terms of the rainfall amounts. But again, it's one of the reasons why that aerial flood warning has been issued. And so for the west side of Cleveland, perhaps toward the east bank of the flats, also toward the west bank of the flats, again, a lot of rainfall being seen right along Madison Avenue, Franklin Boulevard, Clifton Avenue, Bridge Avenue, Bailey Avenue. Again, anywhere between, say, an inch to an inch and a half of rain. And certainly, we in downtown were not spared either. I'd say perhaps upwards of close to an inch of rain falling in a really short amount of time. And that's one of the reasons why that aerial flood warning uh, has been issued. Outside of that, I am concerned about that flood threat over toward Erie County. If you're joining me up toward Port Clinton area, Boy, we picked up a ton of rainfall on the order of, say, an inch and a half to upwards of two inches of rain for you guys as well. So watch for those, wa watch for higher waters along some of those roadways for you. Let's toggle back to the radar. And again, no surprises here. I'm actually really happy to see this. The National Weather Service out of Cleveland has issued that severe thunderstorm warning. This will be in effect for the northern parts of not only Richland, but Ashland County, Erie, Huron County, and then as we head into Lorraine County as well with this thunderstorm complex that we were just talking about. Let's see if there's any updates uh, on the timeline in terms of its speed. You can see where that newest severe thunderstorm warning was just issued. Moving to the northeast at about 25 miles per hour. And when I was tracking this earlier, I was looking at between 20 to 25. So again, I totally agree with that. And what I'll do is I'll update this with our newest information at 25 miles per hour. We'll overlay a storm track on here. It's moving generally toward the east northeast. So let's let's go ahead and put this out an hour or so. And you'll notice if you're joining me from Vermilion, New London, New London, Amherst area, heavy torrential rain, gusty winds. We're talking about winds capable of bringing down trees and power lines should move in between 225 to 235 New London and Amherst and then downtown Lorraine at about 237. So let's say after 230, you got to make sure that you're inside and staying weather aware. Elyria at about 250 and then North Ridgeville just after the top of the hour around 3 p.m. And again, this is based on a 25 mile per hour track. It may pick up in intensity and in speed. And that's one of the reasons why, although it says 302 in North Ridgeville, listen, by 250, a good time to kind of get weather aware and make sure that you're getting inside and away from these storms. Because as you know, lightning can be a big problem with this as well. Lightning can actually strike a good 10 miles from the parent thunderstorm. And so again, 10 miles ahead of that storm, you want to make sure that you're prepared. So let me dig in and show you what the wind analysis on this looks like as well. We can actually dive in using what we call our base radial velocities. And it gives us just an idea on what the wind field looks like within this. And again, although it won't necessarily tell us what ground truth looks like, it'll give us a, a good idea on, on what, what the winds are looking like, what the wind profiles here are looking like. So I'm gonna remove the lightning just so that isn't as much of a distraction and just kind of toggle on here what the winds on this could, could be featuring. And again, as we said before, upwards of 40 to 50 mile per hour winds, certainly possible out of that. This is again using our base radial velocities and you can see perhaps upwards of 40 to nearly 50 mile per hour winds. It doesn't take a ton of wind when we're talking about already super saturated soil to bring down a tree, maybe bring down a couple of power lines. And this will be one of the reasons why you want to w make sure that you're watching out for perhaps a couple of power outages uh, just east of Norwalk, given the fact that those winds and the wind field on this is a little bit more strong. So let's go ahead and overlay radar once again. I'll show you what our lightning analysis looks like, the number of lightning strikes that we're tracking within this thing as well. And then um, we'll go ahead then and, and here back to what's going on in Cleveland as well. Uh, lightning again, an issue in spots. And over the past 10 minutes or so, about 23 lightning strikes. So again, you'll certainly hear this as it crosses from Norwalk over toward 
Clarksfield, my friends towards Oberlin and Oberlin College, a great time again to get inside, get weather wear. And unfortunately, this is going to be kind of the trend. So if you were thinking about perhaps doing the whole getting out to a golf course today, Mm, probably not the best idea. Let's localize this a little bit more and show you where this is and where it's heading. From Plymouth heading right along 224 toward Greenwich, currently in North Fairfield, where you can see as that scan just uh, went over, we're looking at rainfall rates at four and a quarter inches per hour. That is torrential, blinding rain. That's that type of rain where if you're driving along 250 here, it, you come to a complete stop because you can barely see a car length in front of you. So again, torrential rain, lots of wind with this as it heads in the direction of Fitchville. And then up toward Norwalk, it looks like it'll be exiting downtown Norwalk here soon as it moves toward the east. So right along 20, if you're joining me along Ohio State Route 250 toward Townsend, right along, say, Heartland Center Road, also seeing those heavy showers and thunderstorms. Heads up for my friends in Wakeman, over toward Vermilion, Berlin Heights. Again, we're all under the gun with some torrential, really heavy rain. And then just offshore, this is just east of downtown Lorraine toward Avon, Avon Lake area, seeing some moderate to heavier showers just moving offshore, which is the good news. Rocky River, we're drying things out for now, but should this, I'm going to do something kind of cool here. So should this system over toward the, our west of Cleveland, continue on, on its track toward downtown Cleveland area, this would then, if it holds together, if it holds at the same speed that it's moving at, which is about 25 miles per hour or so, this band of really heavy torrential rain would then move into Lorraine at about 2.30, Elyria at about 2.45, North Olmsted just after the top of the hour and around Lakewood at about 3.20. And if you're joining me from downtown Cleveland area, boy, we were just under the gun with some really heavy torrential rain, lots of lightning, gusty winds. It looks like we could see another round of this, say, within the next uh, hour to hour and a half. So at about 3.30 to 3.36-ish or so is when you may experience another round of torrential rain. And unfortunately, we already have flooding concerns, so now we're adding to that even more rainfall. And we showed you the rainfall rates out of this thing over here, which was near four and a half inches in spots. So again, that's torrential, torrential rain in spots. And you can see as we kind of click around and look at the different rainfall rates. This is estimated according to our radar. Again, there's some, uh, there's certainly uh, some blinding rainfall in there. So just kind of taking a look at what the National Weather Service is saying, we're in a, a, a closed chat with them and they're able to provide us with, with an excellent resource of, uh, of information. They are saying that toward Seneca County, which is just outside of our viewing area, that numerous trees are down because of storms moving on through. It also looks like Cleveland National Weather Service uh, toward Geneva on the lake to Conneaut. Um, looks like there's a little marine warning there. So what they're saying here is if you're joining us from this general region here, get off the water. So from Euclid, Bratnall area, men are on the lake toward North Madison area. Given the fact that showers and thunderstorms are on the way, heading generally in an east-northeast direction right along the coastline, a great idea to get you know, if you're thinking about doing that boat ride, let's bring it in, let's bring it back on shore and let's get back to, to land where you'll be safe and free from harm. Not to be left out, our friends in Ashtabula County toward Pierpont, Denmark, Dorset, right along Ohio State Route 307, seeing some heavy showers and thunderstorms your way as we are in Hartsgrove, Huntsburg area, just south of Chardon. And this, let me just see what the direction of movement is. You'll notice that the direction of movement within this band is generally toward the east-northeast, so Chardon, man oh man, another round of heavy rain on the way. Hearts Grove, you'll be seeing some heavy rainfall as we are in roaming shores right now. And then, again, in Lake County, North Madison, get ready for some heavy torrential rain. Good news is it looks like they've allowed for that severe thunderstorm warning uh, to be canceled. It looks like the National Weather Service canceled that uh, for Cuyahoga, and then, of course, Geauga and Lake County. I think that was a good idea. And the reason for it, as we were talking about here, was just because the intensity on that was really diminishing quite rapidly. Something else to, to 
look out for, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna geek out for you here just for a quick second since we have plenty of time on the internet, is what we have is called an outflow boundary and along that outflow boundary is typically where you could see the redevelopment of storms. And so with these storms that pushed on through right here, what it did is when that wall of water came crashing down from the thunderstorm to the ground, it's almost like a hose. When you spray a hose, you have all of that residual water that kind of fans out. And that's exactly what happens with thunderstorms. And so what you can see then right here is our little outflow boundary. And right along that outflow boundary at times, that'll serve as a focus mechanism for showers and thunderstorms to redevelop along. And so if you're joining me right along, say 42, this is from in between Strongsville and Medina, you can see a little flare up right along that outflow boundary. I'll zoom into that just for a second to show you what it looks like more specifically, just southeast of Strongsville proper. But again, long story short, lots of rainfall expected uh, out of those thunderstorms that develop. So real quick, we'll zoom into Strongsville and you can see right along that outflow boundary, as we mentioned, right along, uh, Howie Road and Valley Parkway is where we're seeing a little redevelopment there. So no surprise there, complements of our outflow. And then here's what we're continuing to keep our eyes on. And you know, let me know what you're seeing too. Feel free to dial in with me on Facebook, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, and shoot me a message. Let me know what you're seeing outside of your backyard just so that we can uh, update other folks. But this one, this little line here from parts of Erie, Huron County, northern end of Richland and Ashland County. To be honest, I'm not really too concerned at this point in Richland County, although you are getting that text message alert most likely to your cell phone of a severe thunderstorm warning being issued. I think that the biggest threat's going to be in parts of Lorraine County as this moves on in. That's a really powerful, well-built, well-structured storm system. On the southern flank of that, you'll notice that toward Willard, over toward Shelby. Yeah, we're seeing a couple little bubble up showers and thunderstorms down your way, but I don't know if that's going to actually meet severe criteria. So south of Willard, not all that concerned, not too concerned south of uh, 224 as of this point, but you'll notice that in Erie and Huron County, this big cluster of storms that's racing toward the east at about 25 miles per hour, that's something that we'll watch very carefully. I wanna dig into this one just to see if there's any hail in there, what our hail parameters look like. Again, I'm not expecting hail to be a huge issue. I think the bigger threats out of this are going to be the damaging winds, so toppled, toppled trees and toppled power lines, and then that flooding too, man, oh man. These thunderstorms that are popping up, you can feel that it's working with the humidity and the juice in the air are producing just torrential amounts of rain. And it's that rain that will lead to that flooding, which could be flash flooding at times. So let's dig into this just a little bit more, because again, this is what I'm a little bit more concerned about right now. So let me zero in. This is between Sandusky and Lorraine, and just kind of show you who's under the gun right now. It would be Vermilion, Berlin Heights, down toward Florence, Townsend, Wakeman. This is knocking on your back door within the next minute or so. Down toward Clarksfield, Heartland, Bronson. I think that again, if you are, you know, you need to be inside with this thunderstorm. And then it begins to kind of lessen in intensity as we head down toward Greenwich and then right along 224. And as I mentioned before, I think south of 20, 224, we're doing fine, but north of 224, please just get inside until these, uh, until all this is passed on over. So just to show you what those rainfall rates in here look like, by the way, again, three inches, two inches, you know, upwards of an inch and a half or so per hour. That is torrential blinding rain. Man, this would be a bad time to be driving on the turnpike here uh, out of Lorraine County and then into parts of Erie and Huron County because again, that would just, that would be real. It's a, I'm sure there's slowdowns because of all of this. This is moving, as we mentioned, at about 25 miles per hour. So what I, what I wanna do is take the, this is an interesting feature right here, but take, the, the leading edge of this out some, and then see what cities are going to be in its path here real soon. Again, Wakeman 222, current time is 220, so in the next few minutes here, Amherst 233-ish, Lorraine 
it looks like this will be in your neck of the woods at about 238. Pittsfield at about 243 is when you'd expect this to move on in as well. And something something that it's an always an interesting feature. Whenever you see lines of showers and thunderstorms, typically right along the leading edge of that line is where the most torrential of the winds would be, or I should say the strongest of the winds. And that's where we could see the trees coming down, the power lines coming down, but also, and I just want to mention this in passing because I noticed the little feature down here, which looked like a little curly cue or a little notch. At times you could see an isolated little spin up. So perhaps a weak tornado could be formed out of this. And that's one of the reasons why it's really important that you heed this warning and you take it a little more seriously. And when it's, and when we say, Hey, listen, this is moving into Amherst at 233 by all means at 225. Please stay inside away from the windows. You know the drill. This is not our first thunderstorm here in Northeast Ohio, and this is certainly not going to be our last one. But again, you know the drill. Just get inside, get to a safe spot until all of this is passed. What I'll do now is I want to just kind of do a quick little survey around the area. If you're joining me around Akron, Canton, you may have some questions about what's going on in your neck of the woods. It looks like Akron right now we're doing just fine. Canton looks fine. Carroll, Carroll County, Carrollton area, just a couple of isolated little pop up showers and thunderstorms. Same sort of story as they head into Portage County and then Trumbull County, parts of Lorraine, uh, Ashtabula County also seeing that. This was our line at one point that was severe thunderstorm warned moving through Munson, Huntsburg and in the direction of roaming shores. Again, at this point, it looks like that's just general thunderstorms and then right over the water right over the water toward Fairport Harbor, seeing some heavy showers and a couple of thunderstorms in your neck of the woods as well. And one thing I want to mention here, which is always an interesting feature that we'll sometimes see is whenever there's a thunderstorm right along the water like this, that again creates that wind that we were talking about before. And sometimes what that wind will do is it'll actually push the water and when it pushes the water, that'll create waves. And so at times, we'll see some higher waves right along the north coast. So from Menor on the lake area, Fairport Harbor up toward North Madison, watch for some more high waves. That, of course, could lead to some rocking on your boat. I know, of course, obviously, some people here in Northeast Ohio actually live on their boat. So if you're joining me from your boat and you're perhaps over toward Fairport Harbor, up toward the lake and toward, say, North Madison area. Yeah, we're going to be rocking here and rolling just because of that thunderstorm right along the immediate coastline. And that's one of the reasons why the National Weather Service has issued a little marine warning and a marine statement just saying, hey, listen, boaters, it'll get a little bit rocky, a little toxy turby on the water, so watch out for that. All right, let me just show you what's going on a little further south because Chardon, man, oh, man, it's coming down quick and in a hurry down in uh, parts of Geauga County, that's for sure, toward Huntsburg. Let me go back to that severe thunderstorm warning real quick toward the west, and then I'll we'll, uh, we'll update you more on my Facebook page, and we'll get off our Facebook Live here. But here's what things look like right now, just to kind of reset where we're at from the western edge there of Lorraine County. I'm going to pause this just for a second put a little storm track on there once again. And this is going to be really the, the, the parts that I'd be a little bit more concerned about. And I'll put, I'll put this out about 20 miles or so. And you'll notice that again, as we mentioned, a couple of these cities you'll see, uh, you'll see repeated, but Lorraine at about 238, Elyria 245 to 250, and then North Ridgeville in parts of Cuyahoga County and the eastern end there of Lorraine County around the 3 p.m. hours when you can expect heavy showers and strong thunderstorms in your neck of the woods. Just another little peek at our at our wind field here and I'll remove the lightning and I'm not seeing very much bright green. And green, by the way, represents represents the uh, uh, the wind field that is moving toward the radar. And then whenever you see red here, it would mean it would mean uh, winds moving away from the radar, and I was just kind of curious about that little thing. But either way, though, notice that those winds, again, 35, 40, upwards of perhaps 50 miles per hour along the leading edge of that, certainly capable of bringing down a couple of those trees and a few of those power lines. So if you parked your car 
right by a tree and you're joining me out ahead of this saying Oberlin up toward Oberlin College, Wellington area, even Sullivan. I'd probably run outside, you know, grab the keys, turn the car on and get it away from a tree because should that tree come on down, it could do quite a bit of damage to your vehicle. And obviously no one has time to deal with all that, especially if we can take a preventative measure a little early on to, uh, to keep that from happening. So again, not a bad idea to do that if you're joining me from Lorraine down towards Oberlin, Wellington and then New London. All right, let me just kind of expand this and walk through the rest of the day for you real quick. We'll pick things up through this afternoon and again, notice that scattered showers and thunderstorms continuing through the six o'clock hour. This is, by the way, all out ahead of a cold front that will be moving on through. That's helping to ignite some of those scattered showers and storms. One good piece to the puzzle out of all this is that some folks need the rain East of Cleveland, it's been interesting. We've seen a ton of rainfall, but west of Cleveland, again, some of your lawns over towards, say, Lakewood. I was there just the other day, and boy, it was looking kind of brown. So again, it's much needed rainfall. It's a Tuesday. The weekend looks great, so we'll take the rainfall on a Tuesday, right? But during your drive home from work, know that it might be a slow go of things. If you have any plans or maybe it's date night for you and you're thinking about heading out about to your favorite restaurant doing patio seating, not the night for patio seating with scattered showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. Of course, at 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock, we'll have our chief uh, meteorologist Betsy Kling in tracking these storms as they move toward the east. You can see this is a snapshot on at about 9 p.m. And then once we lose that daytime heating or the energy from the sun, in other words, once the sun sets, I think that our showers and thunderstorms should begin to diminish some, which is the good news. And then as we continue through the day tomorrow, now this is going to be on Wednesday, a couple more scattered showers and storms in the mix with your universal windows direct full seven day forecast showing the temps making it into the mid 80s. But given the fact that we're seeing the rain and storms right now, Again, I expect that we've already hit our high temperature at Cleveland Hopkins. And from this point forward, I think we'll be cooler than that 86. Nevertheless, though, scattered showers and storms both Wednesday and on Thursday. But hallelujah, right? By Friday, Saturday and Sunday, boy, things looking a whole lot better. Less humidity in the mix. I think we'll see more sunshine. Again, we'll take the rain during the week as long as we can preserve what should be a fairly decent looking weekend here in Northeast Ohio. So a lot to look forward to there. And again, just to reiterate about some power line safety for you, you always want to make sure that should those winds that we're tracking, which is our main threat out of these thunderstorms, bring down trees and power lines, you want to stay at least 30 feet away from any downed power line. Call the professionals, never touch a power line. Obviously, if it's live, you can be electrocuted and killed. And you don't want to attempt to move those power lines. Lines. Leave it up to the professionals. That, my friends, is what they're paid for, right? You can always connect with me, of course, on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. I'll be tweeting out updates for you should any more of these thunderstorms become strong to severe. And, of course, we'll keep an eye on things throughout the better half of the afternoon and then through the evening as well. So stick with us right here on Facebook Live. Should any other storms or severe thunderstorms pop on up, I hate to annoy you, but you know what? If we're keeping you safe and free from harm, that's the, uh, the best news in the world, right? So we'll continue to keep an eye on things and please make sure that you're staying weather aware through this afternoon.